Venerable religious and dear parishioners, I remember reading about a teacher who asked her students, they were probably first or second grade, to write a short letter to God or to tell him something. And as you can well imagine, it was very heartwarming to read these little letters that children would say to God. And among the heartwarming and indeed humorous things that one little girl wrote to Jesus was, Jesus, if you, if you look closely, I will show you my shoe, new shoes when I go to church on Sunday. <laughs> and, of course, what the little girl was failing to realize is that God already saw her new shoes Matter of fact, he saw them when they were made. He, God sees and knows all things. But there's something still about that, that childlike expression that I want us to ponder today as we have this procession where Jesus will walk among us. It's only once a year where he will go outside. It's true that in 40 hours and in, on Holy Thursday, our Lord walks among us, but it's, it's here in church. Here we're going to be going outside the church. If this was a Catholic country, we'd be going through the streets of the city, and the whole city would turn out, and people would be kneeling all along the procession route. But anyway, that... What that little girl was aware of is that Jesus would be looking at her in a way on Sunday that he wasn't during the week. And this is true. As I said, God sees and knows all things. But when we are in church, we are with our Lord, not just spiritually, but we are with him physically and our lord our lord's physical eyes will be on us as they are every time we are in church in the presence of the most holy sacrament of the altar and i want you to be aware of that as our lord walks past you and as you bow before him in adoration he is looking at you he is physically present in the totality of his being. Now, of course, he will be hidden in the little white host, but he is no less really present in the Holy Eucharist, in the tabernacle, in the Mass, as he was when he walked among the apostles and the people of Palestine 2,000 years ago. The difference is that you and I have to make that act of faith in a, uh, in a greater way than the people had to make before. Now, even when our Lord walked 2,000 years ago, people still had to make the act of faith because our Lord was not walking in his divine majesty. It was hidden. To most people, our Lord would just seem like an ordinary man. Although, as soon as you started to pay attention to him, you would realize this was no ordinary man. But still, that act of faith had to be made. This is God walking among us. And my dear brethren, we can never meditate on this enough that God became one of our human race. You cannot dwell on that enough. You can always let it sink in more deeply and with more faith and love. God became one of us. He took on a human body and a human soul. And he stays with us in the blessed sacrament under the appearances of bread and wine. He did ascend into heaven 20 centuries ago but he willed to stay with us where we would have to make that act of faith, and he's in the Holy Eucharist. 
and he comes inside of us. As we were reflecting on Thursday feast of the Corpus Christi, the Holy Eucharist is called the bread of angels. And it seems like a contradiction because angels have no body. They cannot receive Holy Communion. But they can receive spiritual communion. As a matter of fact, they are in a continual spiritual communion with God. St. Michael, our parish patron, all of the angels, they see God face to face. They are with him. They are in spiritual communion with him constantly and eternally. Or There will be no end to that. But while we are in this life, we have bodies and souls. Of course, the body will resurrect at the end of the world. But in this life, our Lord, knowing that we have this body and soul, gave us something that would appeal to our senses. Where it's not just purely spiritual, but it's physical. And so what is physical that we see? We will see the white host. We see the small white host just before the priest gives it to us in Holy Communion. We can taste what, taste what seems like bread. We feel it put on our tongue. Sometimes you can even catch a bit of the, the, the aroma or scent from it. I mean, it, and it smells like bread. So our Lord, knowing that we have not just a soul but a body, wanted to appeal to our body. So he gave us this sensible, the sensible species. But we must never stop at that because we then say, I believe that I am not receiving a piece of bread. I am eating the very flesh of the Son of God, and I'm drinking his blood because the blood is in the body. This is what Corpus Christi is all about. This is what this annual procession is about so that we can celebrate in as glorious and grateful fashion this gift of God to us. I mean, what, who gives of his own body to feed his children. This is something that is a divine invention. And I say that with the utmost respect and awe. It is something that you and I could have never even dared to think. And yet, because, and some of the saints put it this way, they said it's as though God is crazy in love with us. He wants to be with us so much that he wants us to not be in just a spiritual communion with him, but in this life to have a physical communion. For 15 minutes or so, he is within us. Not just spiritually, physically. If we could only think of our angels when we... uh, are at mass, and of course we have to make that act of faith because they're spiritual, but we would, if we could see them, they would be bent in adoration, the greatest reverence and love pouring out of them going to our Lord. And imagine your angel right next to you, and he's facing forward towards the altar. But after you receive Holy Communion, you know what your angel does? He turns And he adores it right at you. Why? Because God is within you. So since we are devoted to the angels, St. Michael is our patron, let's make use of the intercession and help of the angels to help us in our realization, an ever deeper realization of what Holy Communion is. And angels can't commit a sin but if they could envy us, this, would, this is their envy, that they have no body, they cannot receive the body and blood of our Lord like we can. But of course, they're perfectly united with the will of God. They accept that, and they, as I said, they, they worship our Lord just physically within us for those 15 precious minutes or so when we're tabernacles. So much more can be said, and 
I would like to close with just this thought of thanksgiving and gratitude. My dear brethren, it's easy to forget our blessings, to forget what we have. And on this day, as we celebrate with as much ceremony as we can, let us count among our greatest blessings that we have our Lord here. This is the true Mass. So many Catholics have been deprived of the real presence of our Lord because of the terrible changes that came about with the new Mass of Vatican II. We have our Lord. And just to think of him being here all the time, despite our neglect and indifference. Yes, unfortunately, we get used to him being here. And we forget too often, way too often about him. But let us count our blessings today. Let us always try to have a spirit of gratitude. The very word Eucharist means thanksgiving. So let there be a tremendous hymn of thanksgiving going up from our parish today to our Lord in the most holy sacrament of the altar. And just make many acts of faith, many acts of love, many acts of devotion and ask our Lord to always abide with us. May we have a greater physical union with him in all of our holy communions so that we may have an ever greater spiritual communion with him eternally in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.